In moments of fundamental reform, new models of government emerge as coherent frameworks based on clear principles. That was certainly the case in the 1920s when reform-minded Cincinnatians proposed a new charter for the city government. Their goal was to eliminate the corruption inherent in one-party rule that had won Cincinnati the reputation as the worst governed city in the United States. In an era when scientific management principles were first being applied to business, reformers thought they could apply those same principles to city government. In the new charter adopted by voters in November 1924, the reformers proposed a small nine-member council that was elected at large through a complex proportional representation system designed to create a diverse council. These middle-class reformers hoped that educated professionals, especially lawyers, would be elected, not saloon keepers and political hacks that filled the old 32-member council. Once elected, the council members selected one of their members as the mayor to preside over official meetings and represent the city at ceremonial functions. Except for those limited tasks, the mayor was just one among equals. The council was imagined to be a sort of corporate board of directors that established policy priorities and most importantly, hired a CEO, the city manager. The city manager was to be professionally trained and to run large organizations. Early city managers tended to be engineers and eventually were people formally educated in public administration. But like all visions for good government, the 1924-25 charter ran up against the willfulness of practical politicians who saw power as more important than theoretical models of good government. In the 1950s, Republicans convinced voters to make the first change in the 1924 charter by rejecting proportional representation, partly because it seemed to create a pathway that might result in Theodore Barry, an African-American, gaining the office of mayor. In 1969, Democrats and Charterites formed a coalition to oust the resurgent Republican majority, a strategy that succeeded in 1971. That coalition agreed to choose a new mayor every year, not just every other year, alternating between a Democrat and a Charterite. For many Democrats, that compromise belittled the office, frustrated their personal ambitions for higher office, and set in motion a string of efforts to elevate the mayor's office. First, in 1987, came the top vote-getter system, promoted by the popular Charlie Lucan. Whatever candidate got the most votes in the biennial field race for council automatically became mayor. Then in 1999, a charter reform set up a direct election of the mayor. That system established a nonpartisan primary with the top two finishers running head to head in November. The winner became mayor, the loser was not on council. The mayoral primaries produce some of the most unusual and entertaining newsmakers' interviews. Serious candidates like Charlie Luke and Roxanne Qualls and John Cranley ended up sitting next to candidates like Sandra Queen Noble or Jim Burns holding his fake pot plant who had little chance of winning. In the process of moving from a mayor selected by fellow council members to the top vote getter to a directly elected mayor, some ambitious politicians promoted the image of a strong mayor, giving the impression that the real power was moving from the city manager's office to the mayor's office. As attractive as that rhetoric was for some, Cincinnati never moved away from the council manager form of government and never embraced an executive mayor model along the lines of Chicago or New York City. The new powers that the mayor did gain came mainly from the powers historically exercised by council, not from the authority of the manager. That is not to say that new ideas about more activist mayors did not inspire some mayors to assert themselves against the manager. John Cranley went through four managers in eight years, inserting himself in negotiations with developers and with city labor unions. That dynamic certainly shifted the power and authority patterns inside City Hall. What the long-term effect will be is not clear. 
During the 20 years of Newsmakers, the mayor became a more high-profile figure who gained greater status and greater operational control over council, but Cincinnati is still a council manager form of government, though the relationship of mayor, council, and manager is much more fluid and dependent on personalities than it was 25 years ago.